G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Thursday just after lunchtime here in Australia, market's up ever so slightly again. Now it's 2.18 trillion, so day before yesterday I think it was 2.13, then it went to 2.16, now it's 2.18. So every day at the moment jumping up by about sort of $200 billion thereabouts. Things are starting to look good, but we're still not out of the woods just yet. We still have to wait and see. There's many things on the charts that can sort of still scare people. But I mean, when we have a look at this chart, look, over the last three months, look how well a lot of things are done. Now, not everything. Some things are down. There's always going to be outliers. But generally, looking green three months, looking green one month, looking green seven days, and also looking green today. Hence why we're up roughly 1.2%. So overall, things are looking pretty good. Now, BTC dominance is dropping a little bit again. People are getting excited, and so they're rushing out to get in the altcoins. Just be careful is all I say. Nothing I, not, None of the information that I provide, it's that. It's information. It's not financial advice. I'm definitely not a financial advisor. And look, I'm in the altcoins, so I'm not trying to tell you to get out. But this market, you need to remember that when it goes up, you know, if Bitcoin goes up by 50%, some altcoins will go up by hundreds of percent. But if Bitcoin drops by 50%, those altcoins will drop by 70 to nearly 90%. So that's what you need to remember with the altcoins. There's heaps of really good ones out there. If you've been watching my videos, I've shown you ones that I like. And look, the gains are great. But my personal opinion, and that's all it is, is when you're investing, make sure you've got, you know, for me, I would say a minimum of 30 to maybe nearly 50% of your portfolio in Bitcoin. 50 might be a bit much depending on who you are. Some people think you know a whole lot more. But for me, I think Ethereum and Bitcoin, but definitely Bitcoin. Again, we're still waiting to see if Ethereum 2.0 can be all it's supposed to be. Bitcoin is basically all it's supposed to be. Minus a little bit of... Um, sort of scaling stuff and we got you know lightning network and things like that coming but for me i would say you know have minimum 30 percent in bitcoin so it's good to chase these altcoins but if you're new to this space and you haven't been through a bear cycle and you don't get out in time and take profits properly you're gonna get wrecked okay you really will get wrecked and it's hard to understand just how wrecked you will get i have been through this i got in late 2017 thought I was a genius uh, turned uh, I've told this story a few times turn eight hundred dollars into around about four thousand two hundred in a matter of probably two and a half months that's that's a pretty big difference like that's a you know nearly a 4x in a couple of months and then that eight hundred dollars turned into three hundred and ten dollars at the bottom of the bear market so I lost a whole lot of money and a lot of that was in Bitcoin so the altcoins did even worse so again plenty of great projects out there plenty of great gains but just you know my personal advice and that's all it is it's not professional advice is make sure you've got bitcoin it's the granddaddy of them all it may not go up as much as the others but it still goes up enough and it is the safest bet so i just want to put that out there all right anyway volume down a little bit Bitcoin price, 47000 We can see 365 That's nice. And look, gas price is up again a little bit, so now $5.20. People getting excited, starting to, you know, get out of uh, get out of stable coins and things like that and starting to get into the altcoins. All right, so last 24 hours, what's done the best? Let's have a look. Oh, all right. X Sushi. Nice, 16% gain. I was thinking about getting some sushi, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe I'll hold off for a couple of days and see what happens. Avalanche having a nice gain. Curve having a nice gain. And again, look at these gains over the last three months. People have been somewhat bearish and really, really worried, but we have been going up for quite some time. I mean, we've really been going up for quite some time in saying that, but we definitely have been going up. I mean, look at that synthetic starting to make a move. A lot of DeFi projects are starting to wake up at the moment. So Curve, Sushi, Synthetics, Maker, you know, Polygon's a little bit sort of DeFi and things like that. So, you know, very interesting time. And look, we got some nice double-digit gains, but plenty of, you know, sort of high to mid-single-digit uh, gains as well. 
Now that is from just 1.2% up. So just wait until, you know, we have a day where, you know, particularly maybe Bitcoin or Ethereum really make a big move. And they will. It's coming. It's just a matter of time, in my personal opinion, again, personal opinion only. All right. So what about losses then? What hasn't performed so well in the last 24 hours? Well, there we go. E-Gold, it had a bit of a pump though. So of course, it's going to have a bit of a pullback. Tezos, same thing. Uh, Harmony. HBAR, Algorand, Atom, so a lot of coins that have been pumping over the last few days to week, uh, maybe even a little bit more, because again, look how they've been doing over seven days, one month and three months. A lot of these coins are really up. Now they're having a bit of a retracement, MENA protocol, but look, the worst loss is 10%. Elrond Gold nearly doubled uh, its price, you can see, over just the last month, and it has nearly tripled its price in the last three months. So 10% pullback in 24 hours is not so bad. So again, some nice gains there. Not too many losses, but look, some of these losses are there. But again, they're from coins that have already pumped. It just doesn't go up forever. You've got to have some losses. Let's go over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look where we are. Still just really tra traveling kind of sideways. We are really range bound. We can see that we've kind of been between, let's say, 40, you know, 5,000 to around about sort of, what was that, 49,000. And we're only really up at 49,000 and above for a while. It's more really just ranging between that kind of 45 and 40, sort of 8,000. Everyone's waiting to see what's gonna happen, what's gonna be the next big move. Is it gonna be up? Is it gonna be down? You know, the altcoins pop off when we get this ranging pattern by Bitcoin. But what generally happens is eventually Bitcoin will make a big move. It's just whether it's gonna be to the upside or the downside excuse me, that people are, you know, really wanting to know. Definitely possible we go to the upside. Uh, that is what I'd be leaning towards. But I think it is entirely possible that we still probably have to come back down and retest this 42,000. I do think that's a, a, a high probability, but I'm thinking it's going to be something that happens fairly quick. Again, really to ha get a bit of an understanding of how the markets are, are possibly going to perform, is look at the longs and shorts. If too many people are shorting, it'll probably go long. And if two people are longing, it'll probably go short. And I don't know exactly where they're sitting at the moment. I'm just saying we've got a weekend coming up. Wouldn't surprise me if we have a bit of a sell-off over the weekend. And again, maybe we don't have to come right down to 42, but we'll just have to wait and see. You know, Maybe we've had something like this and then we've got to come down like this. Nothing's guaranteed in life. We have been ranging around here for a while. So maybe it's about time that we see something like this. Again, in the kind of midterm, so in the next sort of couple of weeks, I think we go up. I just think in the short term, definite possibility that we could come down. And this is the level that I'd be looking for, that it maybe gets down to about sort of 42-ish thousand dollars. So if you wanted to set some buy orders, uh, that wouldn't be a bad place. I'd be kind of looking more around... 43 to 42,000 because there's no guarantees it comes down to 42. Look, it come down, could come down lower. Maybe it's going to come down and do a retest of, you know, this kind of level here. I don't see that coming, but, you know, anything's possible in crypto. All right, moving on, a couple of interesting stories. So Ray Dalio has come out and said, if Bitcoin succeeds, regulators and governments will try to kill it. Uh, uh, they've twisted the words a little bit there because when you come down here, it says, if the primary cryptocurrency's mainstream adoption continues and the asset succeeds, regulators and governments will kill its progress. That I believe they will try to do. They are. It's already happening right now. It's not even governments. It's just big uh, institutions and that trying to slow it down because everyone's going to want to get a piece of it and get on top of it. And if governments haven't had a chance because they just you know, didn't pay attention to it and thought it was going to go away. Once they realize where it's going, they absolutely will suppress it and do all kinds of things so they can then get a piece. That's the way it's going to work. But will they kill it? No, I think it's too far gone now. Cryptocurrencies are, they're almost mainstream now, not quite full on mainstream, but a lot more people are getting into it. And a lot of big business has got into it. You know, whether you like it or not, governments are kind of run by big business. Governments make their policies and that, but they've you know taken a lot of uh, money from big business to help get elected and do all sorts of stuff. Big business are now heavily invested in cryptocurrencies. They're not going to want to kill this. They, uh, yeah, it's gone too far. And 
how do you turn off the internet? That's the other problem. That's what it would come down to. You'd have to absolutely kill the internet uh, and then, you know, go back to nearly Stone Ages for it to happen. And I just don't see that coming. So, but I definitely, again, we could see some, you know, serious FUD in the next sort of five to 10 years. But again, I don't think they'll kill it, but they could come out with some regulations that just make it really hard for the everyday uh, user to yeah to kind of you know forge an easier path forward it can't, could become quite difficult but for me uh, I didn't come here because it was just uh, easy although you know it's a whole lot easier in the traditional finance world I came here just because I believe this is the future uh, and I didn't expect it to be you know completely easy not that it's been completely easy again like I was saying before if you haven't been through a bear market then you know you might think this is all real easy now wait till a real bear market comes that is quite difficult to get through but look, big venture firms, they're still raising hundreds of millions of dollars. Again, these big venture firms, you know, they work with governments and regulators and things like that. They're, this space isn't going to be killed. Can we see some uh, regulation that can really slow down the progress? Absolutely. And I mean, we're sort of seeing it now, but that's not even regulation-wise. Again, that's just the big end of town trying to slow this thing down because they just don't want it to get out of hand until they're set wait for the governments to come in and do the same and you know maybe the governments come come in and say uh they have a thing like where they take away the gold from everyone it's possible that they try and come and do that with cryptocurrencies but i just think that would be way too hard there is too many people invested there'd be too much of an uproar i think a lot of people would be really cranky and there's just too many different ones out there for the governments to simply say all right we're taking it all and you got to give it to us and just yeah those kind of days are, are too far gone but here we go venture firm raises 350 million to double down on its cryptocurrency investment so u.s venture capital firm jump capital closed its largest fundraise to get involved deeper into the cryptocurrency space and it's not just them skybridge like they've already been in a while but now they've raised more money so skybridge launches a 250 million dollar fund to enhance blockchain adoption this is the big end of town putting hundreds of millions of dollars and it's just a fraction of the money that they have though it's like you know literally two percent maybe five percent if they're lucky i don't think it'd even be that for some of them but putting hundreds of millions of dollars into this space why would this space suddenly get banned when so much money's gone into it just can't see it happening uh, I, I think again we, it's we've got to base everything on probabilities is it possible 100 percent, it's possible is it likely no because of a lot of factors again so much money's already come into it uh you know it's growing at exponential kind of rate how do you you know cut off something that's exponential it's like the internet when it started and then mobile phones everyone was worried and there was all this regulation fud around all that kind of stuff mobile phones internet you name it and it's the same with this space it's going to take a while and then eventually you know everything will kind of be sorted and it will literally just catapult not everything's going to make it need you to remember that but once it really does sort of get going those ones that are going to make it they're going to you know turn you know some lucky people who put in only a couple of thousand dollars maybe even a couple of hundred dollars uh into you know the right project at the right time make them extremely wealthy but it just doesn't happen overnight again you just look at solana if you were lucky enough to put a thousand dollars into solana in january this year that's nine months ago you got nearly over a hundred thousand dollars from doing that so imagine someone who's you know got a spare five thousand dollars that they want to chuck into something and it does something like that that makes a big difference then compound that if solana lasts and i'm not saying it won't i think it's a good project uh it's just you know had some things it's got to deal with like all projects do but imagine what solana could be worth in five to t ten years now if another bear market comes i don't know if today's price is the best price is the best price it could be look solana could go to you know who knows what and maybe it's low price only gets back down to 200 dollars, and it's under that at the moment I, I think that's probably less likely but it's just something to consider but venture firms jumping in so we got jump capital we have skybridge hey it's not just them 
Franklin Templeton files for $20 million blockchain venture fund. The asset manager has already raised $10 million for a pool of cash that will be invested into blockchain startups. Again, we're talking now tens of millions, hundreds of millions was big, but we've even got tens of millions of dollars here pouring into cryptocurrencies. This is the smart end of town that is getting invested. They will have done their research before they're just chucking money at things. And would they be doing that if they really thought this space was about to kind of, you know, was on the verge of going into a bear market? Again, probabilities. Is it possible they get it wrong? Absolutely. They do get it wrong. It's not that they don't make any mistakes. It's just rare that they get it that wrong with so many of them doing it. Again, you got to make your own mind up. I'm not here to convince you either way. Uh, I just give you my point of view. And if you've been watching my channel, you'll know exactly where I stand. I'm, you know, I'm a crypto lover. I love this space. Uh, I've made some money off it. I've lost some money off it. You know, it, it is the way it goes. But you know, I'm up gen overall in general. But just the, the technology, the speed that it's going at, uh, all the things that are being built around, you know, NFTs, DeFi, uh, the whole entire sort of blockchain crypto space is unbelievable and I love it. Right, Coinbase, they are applying to trade crypto futures. So getting into leverage and things like that. So the crypto derivatives market dwarfs the size of spot markets. And despite an abundance of regulatory FUD around the derivatives and things like that, they have exploded in popularity in 2021. Hence why Synthetics Network is starting to do well. So they're getting into the sort of leverage part of it as well. At the moment, they're more just derivatives with only a few things in the derivatives market, but also leverage and things like that. According to data from CoinGecko, the market processed more than $143 billion over the past 24 hours on Binance, FTX, and Bybit. And again, they are really big in the leverage, and that's, you know, derivatives falls into that leverage kind of stuff. Currently led the pack in terms of 24-hour open interest with $10 billion, $6.8 billion, and $3.8 billion, respectively. Coinbase wants to get in on that. I really, <coughs> excuse me, I don't like leverage myself, but I understand that it's a tool uh, and, and it has its uses. I just hope that when they put leverage out there, again, they regulate leverage to, you know, maybe no more than kind of 5x at best. It's just too dangerous and too many new people come and get absolutely wrecked by it. I'm glad I've never been one of those people that's uh, gotten wrecked by it. I've never done it, that's why. But it's just too many people come for those super quick gains and they treat it like it's a casino and gambling. Uh, and look, some people are really good at it. Some people just get really lucky at it. But most people usually get wrecked by it in the end. So that's what you need to remember. All right. Again, this is some of those things, the hurdles that we're going to face. State Bank of India blocks payments to cryptocurrency exchanges on its UPI platform. So we had banks in Australia doing the same thing. They were making it really hard for us to send our money from the bank to the actual exchanges. Now, it's not happening quite so much anymore, although there's still some articles out there that Westpac and I think NAB Bank in Australia were. I don't know if they still are, but they were making it quite difficult for their customers to be able to put money on the exchanges. Uh, I use Coinspot here in Australia, and I was having a few difficulties early on with the Commonwealth Bank, but it was only very early on, and now I don't have any issues. Commonwealth Bank uh, have given me no headaches been with them for a really long time and I was considering leaving them but now that I can invest in cryptocurrencies or at least get my money onto the exchange is really easy uh, I don't have any problems with them I think you know they can probably see what's coming and they don't want to lose customers because in the end that's what will happen whatever bank makes it easiest for people to do they will lose a lot of customers and we got some information coming up about again the growth of this space so State Bank of India simply blocking uh, people from being able, not blocking because it's not completely blocked it's just they've made it really hard for people uh, people to be able to transfer their money from their bank over to the exchanges and that's happened all around the world and again that is just one of the ways they can make it quite hard not impossible again outside of regulation that just completely bans crypto which I think yeah yeah they just couldn't do that I really do think that would be impossible all right, sources with ties to Washington uh, say Joe Biden will renominate Fed Chair Jerome Powell. So that can probably be some uh, 
pretty bad news. He hasn't exactly been crypto friendly, uh, and a lot of people were hoping that someone new would come in. But yeah, we'll have to watch this space. You know, can an old dog learn new tricks? That is what I'd like to know. Because a lot of these really old guys are just set in their ways and they just don't understand crypto and they're really anti-crypto, which is what happens. And it's not you get old, you get anti-crypto. It's you get old, you just get really set in your ways and you're not so open to change. Now, not all people, this is a bit of a generalization, but generally old people don't like change. They just want things to be simple and easy uh, and the same as it's always been. So that's what worries me about Jerome Powell. I don't know if this is... Uh, really great news at all and just you know he's so heavily entrenched in that old traditional finance system where they're all looked after he's super rich because the old finance system worked for him but it doesn't work for the rest of us and that is the problem hence why we need you know new younger people to come in and eventually it will happen young people are heavily into crypto at the moment we just unfortunately have to wait for them to get a little bit older to kind of get in uh, and help progress this space we do have plenty of people in there that are older and are pro crypto but i think a lot of that comes from you know some of the senators and that they have so many people in their area again constantly letting them know hey we really like this stuff and we need you to get on board and so if they want to get re-elected then they need to uh, take a stance either against it uh, believing that's the right idea or to get on board with it to get re-elected all right here we go Cryptocurrency, no longer a millennial game as old Aussies invest. Cryptocurrency is increasingly being seen by older Australians as a legitimate investment. BTC markets released today, that's a, a cryptocurrency market here in Australia, an exchange, today released its annual investor report revealing that one in four of today's crypto investors is aged over 44. Over the past financial year, the exchange recorded a 15% growth in investors aged over 60, making the biggest increase of any age group after the 18 to 24 year olds. This is where it's growing the fastest, in the young, and they're eventually going to you know, be the future, hence why I don't think crypto is going anywhere. And even if we have not so great regulation right now, that will get changed in the future because the younger crowd, they're all leading towards it. Hardly any of them invest in stocks and things anymore. They really are going towards crypto. And now we have one a 15% growth rate of people over 60. This is what they call the boomers, but they've got all the money. Now they can even see what's going on and they are coming over to the space. A lot of money is coming. And again, that's only 15% growth of those investing in crypto, which is still a small part. But these 60-year-olds, if, you know, if they're smart and they've got in at the right time, they understand how the markets work and can hold through you know bear markets and have again got into the right projects you know their retirement will possibly be looking extremely nice in the next sort of five to ten years uh, and again maybe that changes for some of these 60 year olds who are probably still working we generally can't retire here in australia to are about 65 67 ish depending on again how much money you got but generally that's where people are retiring around 65 ish so they're probably still working, taking some of their money for retirement, putting it into crypto. And again, in the next five years, if the space is going to get as big as what a lot of people think it's going to, they may completely and utterly set themselves up for retirement so they can you know, retire well off at you know, 65 and possibly even you know, set up generations uh, from there going forwards. You know, that gener generational wealth that people talk about. All right, last but not least... You can earn up to 7.5% interest on Bitcoin. Is it worth the risk? Again, I'm never offering you financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Bitcoin already makes pretty good gains on the way up. It can make some pretty horrendous losses on the way down. So this is where I stand. I have money. I have some Bitcoin, sorry. Uh, pieces of Bitcoin, not Bitcoins, <laughs> I wish. But I have some of that on BlockFi and on Celsius. And then I have a majority, and yeah, around probably 50% of it are in cold storage. It's a good way to make some interest, but would I, would I risk a big amount of my cryptocurrencies on these platforms? No, maybe a third to 50%. Again, depending on your risk tolerance, how old you are and all the rest of it. So yeah, 
I would definitely put some of it there. Again, that's my personal opinion, not financial advice. The gains are great from Bitcoin, absolutely. But are they not even better if you can make five, 7.5% on the fastest growing asset ever recorded in history? Now that is going to be overtaken, I believe, by Ethereum. And then Ethereum will be overtaken by something else. Eventually they get to maturity and then they just don't grow as much. And so it's something new down below. And I'm not saying just constantly go and chase the new thing because the new things don't always last. But that's the way it works. But Bitcoin, you know, again, people are projecting that this goes to $500,000 in the next five to 10 years. That's a 100x from where we are. Where else can you go on 100x your money in five to maybe 10 years? You know, get lucky on some very early startup or, you know, put it in a, again, a really risky startup stock or something. Bitcoin is almost, not quite, almost though, a guaranteed from here. It's just got so much adoption. There's, everyone's going after it. So if you can 100x your money over 10 years, who wouldn't do that? Now, again, there is no guarantees that Bitcoin gets to 500,000. But what I can tell you is there's plenty of people who think 500,000 is on the low end of where Bitcoin might go over the next 10 years, let alone maybe 20, 30 years. So particularly young people, I mean, you know, you buy a little bit of Bitcoin, you know, stick it in a cold wallet if you want to, or again, put a little bit on Celsius or BlockFi, whatever it is you want to do, and just sit on it. If it's going to maybe 100x in the next five to 10 years, who knows what it might do after that? And again, eventually it matures and then the gains will start to slow down. But it it is a fixed supply. There is 21 million. That is it. And it is getting less and less available all the time. Just things to consider. Again, I, I don't have a problem with putting some of my Bitcoin, again, on Celsius and BlockFi and earning that interest rate. Again, why wouldn't I want to earn even more? We're all out here trying to, you know, set ourselves up for the rest of our life, but be very careful chucking it all on there. But do I think putting a little bit of bit of it into these kind of protocols and things is worth it? Absolutely, I do. But that's my opinion. You need to work out what's best for you. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that gain train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.